The first part of this story ended with Harry arriving at the special room for shooters to test his knife-throwing skills on one of the simulators. He already had his weapon in hand and was fully prepared. After twenty seconds, the machine threw several plates upwards. As expected, without any problems, all the targets were hit at once, with only one throw, the accuracy was incredible. For completing the first training session, 100 points were added to Harry's overall rating. The next launch is about to start. This is basically a great opportunity to use this thing to improve your own level. If you train every day, you can achieve good results. It was already evening, and the guy had just now managed to get to the next level, and as a result he got 80 more points, so there was still room to grow. It was just the beginning of this difficult journey. When Harry looked at the time, he realized that he had forgotten that he had an important meeting scheduled for today because of this training. I had to pack as quickly as possible and go to the meeting place called the Fishing Pier. There was not a soul around. Only the waves of the sea washed this small pier. Suddenly a military helicopter flew right to the edge. With a beautiful lady on board, it was the most spectacular appearance. An elastic ladder was dropped for the guy to climb aboard. It turned out to be the same lady who left the note in the badger crystal box. Her name is Mia. She pounced on the guy with a hug and couldn't believe he had come after all. Then she looked at him and realized he wasn't the one the letter was addressed to at all. After realizing this, her heart was broken and tears flowed. Harry tried to tell her that the recipient hadn't seen the letter because it hadn't reached him. He was here to explain everything. He wanted to leave, but the young lady stopped him. She wanted to get to know each other better, because Thomas never just asked for crystals for anyone. The first most important question was whether the guy was strong, and he said yes. Now from that moment he was accepted without any ceremony as a newcomer to the team, and was forced to fly back to the base with everyone else. The whole team immediately introduced themselves and welcomed the new member. They were happy to have him in their ranks. The boy had to pretend that he was very happy about this event and proudly joined their ranks. From now on, he would have to perform tasks instead of Thomas. One of the group members, whose name is Jacob, thought the newcomer's name was very familiar. So he immediately decided to open the ranking and saw the guy on 68th place there. In fact, the guys have a difficult task ahead of them. A week ago, several people infiltrated a closed facility to engage in poaching. The nearest units have already been sent there, but they were all poisoned by some unknown toxins. Unfortunately, one of them has already lost his life. Thomas wasn't susceptible to toxins, so Mia wanted to ask him for help. If Harry refused to participate, he would be understood and not forced. The guy wasn't one to back down. He couldn't afford to chill sitting in a helicopter. Such self-confidence aroused the partner's interest, and he decided to offer sparring. Since our hero doesn't like to talk off-topic during a mission, he decided to freeze this sparring enthusiast so that he could think about his behavior. Mia was surprised at what she saw, but even more she was amazed that the effect would last for two minutes, she didn't even know it was possible. In order not to create intrigue, Harry said that he had a skill that increased the power of the others. Everyone was shocked by this turn of events, and immediately started asking him what other abilities he had. Jacob remembered an ancient legend about a hero named Elfie, who was a lord of snow and ice, and Harry must be as good as he was. The guy was immediately offered a weapon, he could not go into battle with his bare hands. Then the team went out to do business, according to preliminary data, poachers are somewhere in this area. All participants need to be very attentive and keep in line. Thanks to his heat skill, which works around 1,000 meters, the guy saw a whole pack of wolves. They were all moving in the same direction. Something had clearly attracted them. Mia said that the wolves in this area is a bait for monsters. They are regularly fed. The fact that they are here and the units are destroyed is a very bad sign. In the forest, the smell of meat was so strong that it was not even difficult to find its source, most likely some kind of animal trap. At this point, the team is discussing a plan of action and what they should do next. Since Harry is resistant to the poison, he makes the decision to be the bait to make the poachers give away their location. After hearing this, Mia couldn't close her mouth. 
How can one already be resistant to poison at such a young age? There was no time to talk, we had to act. There was also an order not to take any of the outsiders prisoner, but to shoot on sight, and the rest of the group would cover from cover. When Harry came to the place, the wolves did not attack him, but just called to him, which means that the enemy is somewhere near. The guy saw a few people on either side, so he first decided to clear the field so the wolves wouldn't interfere with him in the fight. He managed to do it in just a few seconds of time. The poachers then activated the scorpion venom, which in theory should be very poisonous to humans, but not in this case. Harry even managed to complain that the toxin was too weak, and when he figured out his opponents for the second time, he threw his blades at their heads, killing them on the spot. If that's all there is to it, the opponents were really weak. The rest of the team even felt a little ashamed that they didn't get to see the guys who weren't even wearing camouflage clothes. We'll have to forget this situation like a bad dream. Harry reported the danger was completely over. Mia noticed the flying daggers in the guy's hands, which looked like the ones the Bureau of Surveillance was working on. They even had a special number on them. These weapons were not the most popular, and ordinary people didn't use them. Harry destroyed those two people so calmly that Mia couldn't even think of what to say to him. She was in a bit of a stupor. The boys, in turn, were fascinated by Harry's professional knife skills. They wondered how many years of practice it took for him to start throwing so perfectly. Since the guy has talent in this respect, he learned in a short period of time with the help of a simulator that throws plates. This simulator was no longer used in educational institutions because it was too complicated. Most students couldn't even pass the first level. One guy on the team was really down about it, because in his whole life, he hadn't managed to pass a single level. It was time to summarize. The poachers who had taken over the forest had used three abilities. The first was wolf pack control, the second was scorpion venom, and the third was super camouflage. Harry was 100% sure about the poison, because he had the ability to absorb it. It was impossible to be wrong. On behalf of the entire team, Mia expressed her gratitude for the help. Many of the fighters are still in the hospital because the doctors failed to recognize the poison, but now it will be several times easier to treat them. The current treatment is not a panacea, just that Harry saved many lives. It turns out most professionals are not that strong. Not everyone can absorb the power of the crystal, so you can't do without technology. But now what to do next? It was just one small group. It is necessary to catch all the others. They will not be able to escape so easily, so you need to at least try. The best thing to do is to take someone hostage to organize negotiations. Lone units like these guys would be much easier to intimidate than the regular military, for example. The decision was made to just wait them out here. Not far from here, Harry spotted another group of people, probably poachers. These people were not shy at all, and came out into the clearing in the open. The most important of them was called Oliver, and as it turned out, a lot of people here knew him. For some reason, he was in a pretty good mood, and even started hitting on Mia. Jacob said that this seemingly ordinary guy was one of the strongest guys in Germany, and that he had to be very careful, and that there was no information about the others. One of the team members noticed among the group of poachers, a previously popular man. According to him, the country invested in this guy quite a lot of resources, but in the end he betrayed her and went the dark road. In his defense, the villain replied that after one refusal, specially trained people deprived him of power and all the resources, but of course about this did not tell anyone. According to him, if it wasn't for outside help, he would never have known what it means to be free and happy, in which case you can get anything you want not to mention power. Unlike China where ordinary people can't even touch crystals. Harry decided not to argue, and threw three of his blades at three different people. Only one survived, the other two managed to stop the weapons in flight. Can't get rid of them that easily, seems like something else needs to be used. Oliver appreciated the forging skills in China, the knives are really well made, too bad their owner has no boundaries and throws them at everyone he can and can't. Harry also informed Oliver that he would have no discussions with the future eternally asleep. 
Despite this, the villain did not lose his enthusiasm and offered to join him, guaranteeing excellent conditions. To put it another way, he wants to destroy Mia's entire team and just recruit Harry and take him under his wing. Harry asks for his knife back first, which Oliver graciously agrees to do. Apparently he really thinks he can get the guy on his side. At that moment Jacob Mystery began to use his power. He increased all of Harry's abilities by 20%. This effect will last for 10 seconds. In order not to lose that precious time, we had to attack now. Harry threw three more blades after that. Two of the boys lost their lives immediately. But Oliver was not so easy. Despite the fact that he was like an ice cube, he managed to control the situation completely, and once again stopped the blade right in front of him. Then the ice began to slip off of him very quickly. The fact that the attack had been sneak attacked made Oliver very angry, and now he was going to take revenge for the Chinese's not-so-serious act. Harry began to realize what had happened, and he froze in place, a complete emptiness in his eyes. Because of this confusion, the boy misses one strong blow to the chest, after which he flies a very long distance away. The guys caught him, so that he didn't hit his head on something, but nevertheless Harry was already unconscious, the blow was too strong. An attempt was made to heal him, but to do so when a person has no heartbeat and no breathing, to do so in a short time frame is becoming very difficult. Anyway, there was no time to shed tears now. We had to deal with this asshole before he destroyed everyone here. Even though the guy was already cold, he was really ashamed of his team. They just took to burying him right there. That's how you help people, and they would even make an attempt to save the man. At least the guys took the fight from such an unequal opponent and started attacking. It seemed that Oliver had a lot of skills, because for every critical situation, he had an optimal solution. At the moment, he was using the fire giant ability, making it almost impossible to take him down if he didn't have fire resistance. Realizing the criticality of the situation, Mia decides to use her strongest skill, which takes a large amount of energy. It was a devastating sound wave, which operates in the range of 600 meters. Oliver felt it immediately, and even fell to one knee from the strain. This vicious poacher could not so easily lose his life, but if you continue to use the fire skill, his human body will burn, it is necessary to take some action as soon as possible. Suddenly everything around him starts to burn with a strong fire, the temperature in the area has risen significantly if it continues like this, the guys can simply burn alive. Apparently, luck was on the side of good today. Harry woke up, and thanks to the fact that he was an ice mage, he put out the fire with a flick of his hand. It turned out he was immune even to such dire situations, he just needed to lie still for a while and gradually his heartbeat would return to normal. As the country Oliver lived in was always in favor of freedom and justice, Harry offered him a one-on-one -on -one fight. The bandit could not refuse, because if he continued like this, this fiery ability would destroy him sooner or later, against all at once he could not stand, but only against Harry there were chances so he had to agree to this adventure. The presence of the whole team will only get in the way, so they gathered and started to run away from the battlefield, leaving the guy alone with this monster. Harry just has to survive, because on him all the hopes rely. Before the fight started, Oliver said that he appreciated such bravery. Harry just smiled back, because he knew that the person who was going to lose his life today was not him. The boy had been preparing for a long time, and he was going to put almost all of his strength into one decisive blow, which would be impossible to stop. The poacher refused in a large ice dome, inside which was a very low temperature, it began to suppress his fire, until he took a normal human form. Its formula is quite simple, you just need to take into account the temperature of the opponent and the cooling time, so you can change the pressure, and the space that surrounds will turn into a vacuum. The next stage of this skill is to simply begin to devour the human body. Since fire cannot exist in a vacuum, Oliver has lost to the laws of physics. When the poacher realized that this fight was over for him, the only thing he had time to do was to say goodbye to his daughter and ask her forgiveness for the fact that her father left so early. When the effect is over, 
Harry should be very weak, usually after such stresses he faints, but this time thanks to the reinforcement he managed to stand. In the end, Oliver was left with only one small crystal, which contained incredible power and many abilities. Of course, this is an unusual crystal, because it did not explode like all the others. By the way, they are hidden inside the body. But why is nothing said about it in the textbooks? If Harry takes it for himself, there could most likely be trouble. Despite the immense power of this item, it is politically useless because it is impossible to improve the level of all these skills in the future. Roughly speaking, whoever absorbs this crystal will remain at the same level forever. So the decision was made to just bury it and pretend like it never happened. Maybe there will be something else useful in the poacher's backpacks. After opening the bag of these ill-wishers, the guy found their yellow crystals that were available for absorption. Their main ability is coquetry. Also in the future it can be improved. There was an unlimited amount of these crystals. Now we know why they destroyed some little bears and burned them alive. If such a serious man had come for those crystals, they must be quite valuable. Harry decided not to dwell on such a strange name and absorb all the crystals at once. Perhaps this skill would become useful in the future. Now it would be a little harder for the enemy to resist Harry's charms. The boys noticed that the flames had gone out on the battlefield, so it was time to check the situation. Harry was already sitting on the edge of the cliff, admiring the view after such a hard fight. Mia was insanely happy, she believed with all her soul that the boy would survive. The girl didn't even notice the stone under her feet and tripped over it. The task was completed, so Harry asked to send him to the academy as soon as possible. So the team immediately set off toward the school. Her sister had called and texted many times, and she had to explain herself to her, but unfortunately she couldn't do it right now because the connection wasn't working. Harry has even considered buying a phone that will work in special zones, but before he can buy one, he has to get a permit. But if the guy finally joins this team, he'll be able to get a permit in no time. It's actually worth a shot with that kind of power, the pay is decent, and the satellite phones are free. The office department is located in the city of Tushu. There are only nine people working there, each of whom is very strong as a full team. They usually work independently on particularly complex tasks that are not able to normal teams. So far, this guy is not particularly interested. He did not want to leave his sister for the sake of work. It seems the academy misunderstood this visit because the principal took a few more representatives with him. After landing, everyone was very happy to see each other. Mia said that they had picked up a C student from this school on the way and decided to let him down. As it turned out, the headmaster didn't even know Harry was a student, but he was quickly informed that he was in a special class, and that he was a student that Charlie had personally recommended for enrollment. The third boy heard this information and thought that Harry had been brought here solely by connections, which made him feel cheated. Finally he couldn't take it anymore, and shouted at the entire helipad that Harry was trash who came by connections, and that there was no place for such people in the academy. Since the guy had no idea who was standing in front of him, he decided not to find out, but instead just to go to dinner with his sister as soon as possible. Unfortunately it wasn't that simple. This upstart wanted to fight Harry, so he grabbed him by the shoulder. You could say with this action he signed the heaviest punishment at least in the future for sure. But he decided not to stop there. He picked the guy up and threw his head against the ground. Jacob had to start emergency treatment again, but this time he woke up quickly. Even though his regenerative ability was weakened, it was still useful. Mia told this upstart to apologize immediately for his act. Harry spills his red liquid for this country to do well here, and instead of thanking him, he was thrown over his hip. His uncle apologized in the guy's place and said it was all the academy's fault. Even so, his mouth didn't close and he managed to sass Mia. By the way, the kid got emotional and called the director his uncle, so the question of connections is completely removed. Mia will report today's incident to the head of the military district and this upstart will get what he deserves. This situation is a huge blow to the academy's reputation. Finally, after all this time, the boy managed to get to his room, 
where he was met at the door by a cheerful Charlie. Apparently Harry wasn't too eager to see him yet, so he slammed the door back shut immediately. With a very serious face, Charlie opened them back up and said, You've been out all night, and you're back with a girl, and it's definitely Harry, or not. The guy laughed a little and stormed into the room, saying that he needed to get changed right away, leaving the two of them alone. Since Mia had already brought the student to safety, she could be free to go about her business. On the one hand, that's right, but Charlie doesn't have the authority to tell such an important lady what to do, even within the confines of a school. After some more time, the boys finally sat down at the table. Olivia asked her brother where he had been for so long. One of the girls needed help, so the boy couldn't refuse her. Charlie had been warned about it beforehand, or he would have put Harry on the wanted list. Olivia threw herself into tears, and made it clear that she was against marrying this girl because her brother had to skip class because of her. But not to worry, even if Harry ever got married, there was no way he was going to skip class. If this cheeky girl comes again to distract the guy from classes, he will just get rid of her. Olivia's assigned Charlie to protect her brother from these bad women. But you don't have to worry about that. Anyone who wants to hurt him is already a potential corpse. By the way, it's time for the coach to start training properly, because the student can handle him in two seconds. Some boy was sitting on the next table in the dining room, fully documenting Harry and Olivia's actions in his notebook. The biggest question on his mind was why the boy was eating practically nothing. He's a regular member of the student union, gets a scholarship, and there was a theory that he was anorexic. And his sister's appetite has increased, she always has extra chicken and other spicy dishes. When the brother doesn't like spicy food, there's not a piece of chili on his plate. The nerd gave all this information to the other guy through a message on his phone. As soon as Harry and his sister were about to leave, one of the students came up to them and offered to go to a nice new restaurant. The guy immediately flatly refused, but Olivia, when she hears the word food, begins to go crazy. Sometimes it seems that absolutely anyone can ask her out to dinner, and she agrees. To get out of the situation, Harry went to the extreme and accused the boy of peeping on his sister when she was in the girl's locker room. To somehow justify himself in a situation that he had nothing to do with, the student said that he was misunderstood. In fact, he was just looking towards the locker room because his friends were standing near it. Harry ended up calling him a pervert, took his sister's hand and quickly ran to the exit to separate them. He also promised to take Olivia to the place himself, so she wouldn't go with anyone else. Charlie overheard this rant and asked him to take him to the restaurant. By the way, the upstart who had thrown Harry over his hip had been fined for insults and defamation. As it turned out he had been encouraging everyone to write complaints to Harry to get him expelled from the school. All in all it was just great news. When they arrived at the restaurant, the guys had good news and bad news. The first was that in honor of the opening there is a 15% discount on the entire menu, and the second was that there were too many people here. They considered the option of just taking the food with them and going to eat elsewhere. But suddenly, from the other end of the hall, Harry was called by a pretty girl sitting alone at a table for four. She was the prettiest girl in the academy, but at the same time she had an obnoxious temper. Only she could take a huge table for herself, given the large number of people. It was a good time to order food and stay here to fully experience the atmosphere of this new place. Since this girl was a peculiar girl, everyone looked at her differently. Charlie studied her. Harry looked at her like a punching bag and Olivia looked at her like a man-hunter. Not to make things too tense, her sister decided to meet this goddess and asked her what her name was. Olivia assumed it would be something scary, but it turned out to be a perfectly ordinary name, Lily. Meanwhile, Charlie had already finished his analysis. It turns out that this girl is a strong helper, has a buff of 448% of strength when meeting an enemy. It lasts for four minutes. Well, she won't be that cool for long, because when Olivia grows up, she'll be the one and only. Charlie's analysis also showed that Lily was really excited, though she was skillfully hiding it. Since the girl came here in advance, 
and took the exact number of seats, she probably wants to talk to Harry about something. It turned out to be a completely correct assumption. The thing was that the Academy annually selects students to participate in the competition. In previous times they had gathered one team of six people, and this year they needed to gather two teams of four. There were three spots available for this year. Lily suggested that Harry try to take part in the event. The boy replied categorically that he wasn't interested. Because it's not good to fight with classmates. Moreover, isn't Lily's phenomenal abilities enough to win this stupid championship? According to her logic, it's best to put together a team with maximum strength to win for sure. The most beautiful girl of the academy couldn't stand such a reaction from the guys and just left the restaurant. But it was for the best. Now Olivia could eat her portion too. The taste of the dish was rather strange, and apparently only her sister liked it. It was probably the idea of someone higher up than Lily, but who would have thought she would come in person? She wanted to get Harry on her side so that he would sing to her tune, but it couldn't be that way. Olivia had gone overboard with the spices after all, and now the dish was too spicy for her as well. This situation made the guys laugh a little, and Harry decided to give his portion to his sister, so she wouldn't get upset. By the way, in addition to team competitions, there are also individual competitions. Such a format would suit the guy obviously better, but Lily deliberately did not mention it and the award. Suddenly Harry took and started pouring the entire contents of his plate straight into his mouth. From the outside it looked like his tongue wasn't working, in fact it was, but you can't talk about it. The guy asked his companion to stay focused and continue talking about the awards. In brief, the winners of both categories receive prizes. First through third place people get the highest category crystals, fourth through eighth the highest category, and the last two places, the middle category. Since Olivia was out of the loop, she couldn't understand why her brother was called to the competition for warriors. Harry had been looking for the right moment to tell her everything and now was the moment. To not delay long, the guy without ceremony said that recently he had become a real warrior. This information shocked the girl. The little girl began to cry, because she was sure that very soon her brother would lose his life. At first, the guys didn't understand how it was connected, but then Olivia admitted that for absorbing only two abilities, she had twenty years of life taken away from her, and by that logic, it could be assumed that the brother had spent much more. When Harry found out about it, he didn't hold back and screamed at the whole thing. His sister had wasted a whole twenty years of her life. Late that night the boys came home and Olivia showed her brother what crystal she still had left. Originally, the uncle who looked after her had given the girl a crystal with three powers, for which thirty years of life were to be taken away. It was now clear why in the past life, the sister had fought so desperately in the past life. She knew her time was running out. One had to wonder if it was possible to regain the years of life spent absorbing the crystal. As far as Charlie knew, a normal absorption ability would forcibly shorten a life, but Olivia's situation was unheard of. Usually the years do shorten a bit. Unfortunately, there is no technology that can prevent it. Charlie hadn't paid attention to it before but now he saw that the girl had indeed lost twenty years of her life. Since this feature is hereditary, her brother's situation may be similar. Harry's current life expectancy is zero at all, but how is that possible? Olivia can no longer absorb crystals under any circumstances. The guy tries to explain everything to his uncle. He has to get it right. If Olivia loses her life, then Harry's whole life will lose meaning. We can't let that happen. The girl was crying and could not understand how she would protect her brother when they grow up. There are so many horrible creatures in the world, it is very difficult for ordinary people to survive in such conditions. All life is collapsing before their eyes. Ordinary people can also be strong. They become stronger through physical activity, win wars through strategy, heal the wounded. These are all their talents. The power of crystals wasn't the only thing that could make a person stronger. The first person who was able to fight back the monsters definitely didn't have such strength. The girl would be able to throw knives just as accurately if she started practicing hard. In addition, she already has as many as two abilities, so with persistent training, 
a lot can be achieved. Harry will hope that from now on his sister will no longer be investigated as a guinea pig, because she is no longer allowed to ingest any crystals. Charlie said that these lab rats don't like to be disturbed in their work, so don't worry. The boy breathed a sigh of relief, something positive for tonight. Then he asked for his sister's smartphone and called Leo, and told him that Olivia could no longer absorb the crystal energy and asked him to take what was left from her. There's no cure for this disease because it's hereditary. It's treatable. Of course Leo was angry, because it was Harry who would let his sister become a warrior. The whole curriculum was set up for her. Now who to replace her with? Harry hardly fits those parameters. The boy explained that his abilities are not worse, so he will succeed. He can even prove it. But from now on, all privileges between his sister and Leo are removed. If Harry makes it into the top ten in the student personality test, they'll believe in him and put him in her place. For the past decade or so, this MMORPG has ranked first among virtual reality game titles in terms of concurrent users. The hero demonstrates his power with his sword, emphasizing his status as the best player of the abyss. He confidently crushes enemies with his sword, leaving no chance of survival. This master suddenly appeared and quickly eliminates opponents without noticing obstacles. He cleanses the world of evil and keeps control of goodness. Iron, a hero with a sword, easily destroys enemies as if they were paper. His blade is colored with the red liquid of his enemies. With a smile, he will also fight the gods, having won hundreds of battles in ten years. His weapon is lightning, touching, causing sharp pain. With the sword of light, he felt the fire in his fingers where lightning and flame merged, a deadly combination. For three years in a row, he held the first place in PvP, unrivaled and unbeatable. As he touched the enemy with his sword, the fire enveloped the enemy who took cover with his shield to avoid the fate of the victim. The poison daggers with bright green light testified to his determination and confidence in battle. Combining them, he created a dangerous spearhead. With one tug he caught up to the knight, looked into his eyes, and without saying anything, put his life on the line. The knight saw his last moment as iron, with a deft movement of his hand, swiftly ended him on the battlefield. The golden spear in the hands of the desperate boy was rushing at the enemy, depriving him of his last hopes of survival iron pierced him, fresh red liquid pouring over his enemy's face like a stream. It was a brutal massacre but such is the world and such are men. Iron's enemy was defeated. His body lay in a puddle of red liquid, his heart silenced, his eyes closed forever. This man is a gunsmith by profession. He knows his job. Right now he's unbeatable, although even a champion has his champion. But we'll talk about that later. All players who are waiting for the sequel to this masterpiece received a notice? The sequel is coming soon. The release is near. Very interesting what the future holds for this game, the continuation of Abyss. Maybe logging into old accounts won't work. You'll have to start character development all over again. But even so, the desire to play will not go anywhere. Some of them still wondered whether they should continue or not. As they weighed the pros and cons, a call came in on the phone. It was from his older brother, one of the creators of the Abyss. Sean, but why did he call so late? Is it something urgent? Sean had asked Donnie for a favor. Don was wondering why Sean had invited him to this place. Maybe there was something to talk about. There was nowhere to go, so Shock sat down and took a sip of flavored coffee. The man in question was the creator of Abyss, the CEO of Unisir, responsible for the internal affairs of the company. Donnie was very involved in the information being shown on the tablet he was talking about. Sean asked if he knew of the character, and Doni confirmed that it was a Dark Knight he had heard of. The Dark Knight is a key character in the plot of Abyss, the Guardian of the Red Queen. A mysterious and symbolic character who has become a legend. Remembered in the event in honor of the release of the World of the Abyss. A battle with the Dark Knight where a hundred players could test him in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Doni knew about the event and Sean was planning to add the guy to the list of participants. He was certainly not against it, but feared criticism due to his position. 
Nevertheless, Sean encourages Donnie to become a dark knight. This suggestion only caused the guy to laugh. In his opinion, it is the most ridiculous idea. But Sean was serious. He would not stop insisting that Donnie become a dark knight. All who become knights sooner or later lose their lives in accidents. Sean tried to recover the data and find more of some information, but he only found development information. The queen said no, their Korean players took it as a taunt. Sean suggested that Donnie become a dark knight and fight the best player, Mark Tool. Donnie was talented enough to overpower him. The two are half-brothers, so they are considered one family. One wanted to think things through and do everything as efficiently as possible to maximize the benefits. But since Doni was very naive and kind, he could easily agree to his brother's requests, whatever they were. Sean's business had taken away all human notions and sympathy for everyone. Sean and Doni weren't close enough to ask for a favor so blatantly. Despite that, Sean offered Doni free access to the abyss world for life. Doni's reaction was surprised and even a little funny, but then he asked not to be laughed at. The guy was capable of purchasing access on his own, but Sean offered two additional bonuses. The first was a special device to enter the abyss world, allowing him to raise his synchronization threshold to 25%. Doni felt shock and a kind of fantastic surrealism. He couldn't believe what he was hearing from Sean. If indeed it is possible to increase the synchronization threshold to 25%, it would mean an even deeper and more realistic immersion in the game. Usually devices are set to 15%, so 25% is a real temptation. As for the second bonus is the ability to speed up profession changes. Doni paid attention to his history in the gaming world. He spent about nine months to change his profession. He would also like to choose the same profession in this world. Sean is willing to help him do that so that it can happen much faster. It was the best he could offer without risking himself. On this night, the moon was shining brightly and the houses were lit up. The residents were calm and felt completely safe. Doni could hardly imagine what a 25% synchronization level felt like. All of this inspired him even more. Plus, he would get help changing his profession to Weapon Master. Without the extra knowledge, the right level and gear that regular players in the Abyss world need to achieve. Basically, given the title and story, it's like a whole new game. Doni is contemplating how to transition to another world if he has to start over. But with Sean's help, it will take a lot less time. Once he became a monster, he could defeat the other rankers. Doni thought about it, and decided that there was no reason to refuse. He told himself that he would get the fun and the reward. A notification popped up on his phone. The stranger invited the guy to a meeting. Doni was surprised when he read it because he was already going to a meeting today. It turned out it was Captain Kim Chun and he wasn't happy that his messages were just ignored. When the guy found out who it came from, he happily responded to the invitation. Soon Doni will move to the world of the abyss, he's already saying goodbye to old guildmates with whom he had many bright moments. His blue goggles reveal the virtual beauty of the universe. Nine years in the abyss is quite a long time, but the first three months there should be fun, with lots of challenges. A couple days later at Unisir headquarters, the guy asked about the script a joke or the truth. Sean's initial words do not match what is written in the document. Sean explained that these are dialogues that must necessarily take place. Doni just has to be silent, voice replacement, nothing more. Doni hasn't followed the script in his life, but Sean claims he can teach now. Sean's words caused a misunderstanding. Doni didn't understand why it was important. Li Lu, the queen's voice actress, appears. She will help with the script. A girl named Li Lu came into the room. She was playing the role of the Red Queen and hoped for a good cooperation. The voice actress of the Red Queen, surprisingly, but she didn't look like her at all, although what did he care, he thought, pretty is good. All kneel down and worship her, for she is the only ruler of the abyss. Doni was stunned and stupefied by the beautiful lady and her enchanting voice. Doni is delighted with how Leela embodies the Red Queen, but there is still work to be done, 
He also appreciated the girl's skills Sean said that Doni will see Leela more often, so asked him not to forget her and remember her with a kind word. Doni didn't immediately understand what Sean was implying. Was this going to be a collaboration or something more? In any case, for now there is not a moment to lose must start practicing, because very soon the performance. After two weeks the update comes out, on the screen showed an impressive dark night, people silently admired. After a long wait, it was time to launch the Abyss World, only a day left. The event to celebrate the successful launch of Abyss World will begin tomorrow. As many as 100 players will battle against a single dark night. The best of the 100 was Cunt, now he's taking the stage. The guy said that rank 1 player Vols was also invited, but he won't be able to come due to personal reasons people laughed it off and assumed the guys were texting each other. Meanwhile, the schedule showed 10 minutes to the launch of the trailer. Doni saw himself with a microphone on the screen. It's time to get ready and show everyone what he can do. It's time to start. Doni puts on his glasses. He has a change of smile on his face. He imagines himself popular. Character verification has been passed. Dark Knight account. Entry successful. Folks have been waiting a long time for this. Now another popular person is in the waiting area for the 1 vs. 100 event. This is Streamer Wraith, rating 99. The event will start soon, you need not much patience. The first premiere saved this stream. Participation in this event is pure luck. The battle will begin in a few minutes. Victory as such here is not, you need to at least survive 1 against 100. The goal is to defeat the Dark Knight. For this allotted 300 minutes, the fate of the world in the hands of the prayers for good. The queen praised the voice. The voice actor won the audience over with the way he beautifully describes what is happening. Will ordered the expansion of the kingdom's borders. The dark knight answered the call as if he was going to conquer the server. But it is not so. He will be loyal and fulfill any orders. Poor souls, they will only suffer misery, hopelessness and agony. No life for them. Kneel before the Dark Knight. The audience assumed if the rankers got their asses kicked, then the recommendation worked. Magnify him, he now reigns in the abyss. Viewers say running from the beginning is the right thing to do. No one's going to survive anyway, so at least let them show the show. He does not care he will last as long as he can and try to analyze his movement. To begin with, you should check at what distance the knight will start reacting to the player. If you take 10 steps per minute, you can see how he reacts to it, and then it will be clear how to proceed. People reacted indignantly and started insulting. The valiant Prince Wraith was shocked why the public was berating him instead of supporting him. The first fight was coming up. It was a clash of two blades. Prince Rain was surprised when he was wounded so easily. He couldn't resist properly at all. He had been warned beforehand the Dark Knight was stronger, and he didn't believe anyone. The evil Dark Prince wasn't going to stop there. He started looking for his next victim. The whole hall fell silent. People didn't even know what to say. The knight was too powerful. No one could have expected such a confrontation. One of the participants began to cry a lot. She could believe that she would have to fight with such a strong opponent, how he skillfully performed all the combat elements again and again as well as he had excellent physical and mental talents. A guy named Kinch second place in PvP in the rankings of the Abyss. Only people like him will be able to adequately fight with such an opponent. The damage he was doing was staggeringly enormous. Soon enough, the Holy Knight would be his most common victim. But for now, he aimed at hitting the opponent's weaknesses. If done correctly, there was basically a chance of victory. Also standing next to him was a girl named Marie. She is a PvP rancher of the Abyss, just now announced the start of the second fight. The next player called Chard from the Red Sand Guild is quite famous for his high-speed paired blades. Well, it will be interesting to watch him. How long can he last? He has been treating Knight as a punching bag from the start. Let's see what happens in the end. So, the second duel began the Dark Knight vs. Chard of the Red Sand Guild. With one slight movement of his hand, the Dark Knight stripped him of all his limbs. It was a lightning strike. The presenters couldn't believe their eyes. The audience joyfully began to applaud their new idol. 
how quickly he was able to deal with his opponent. The Dark Knight is simply amazing it's only been thirty minutes into the event, not a single opponent has defeated him. Thirty people have already dropped out, and there is no limit to his strength, and no boundaries. A powerful and fearless warrior. If it's that bad, then none of the players are able to last even a minute. The knight hasn't received a single unit of damage yet. It's starting to feel like all the elements of the event are aimed at making sure that no one can successfully complete it. In my opinion, though, that's almost impossible, even with the large number of invited rankers. Not surprisingly, he wishes to have the ability to passively absorb damage. Currently, he's only able to block or reflect the attacks of his opponents but if he had a passive damage resistance skill, it would really hit him. What an impressive result of your work with Unicor. His existence is linked to Akai, and if you think about it, you can probably recognize his class as a mage. Isn't that right? Indeed, it represents the Archmage, a hidden class in the profession. They specialize in using spells of immense power. How will the battle between the mage and the swordsman end? Her method involves using magic and levitation to remotely analyze her opponent. She uses tactics optimal for duels between mages and swordsmen, given the awkward position of the latter. Increasing the distance, however, does not always prove advantageous. According to the official data, the Dark Knight has a resistance to magic, which presents a challenge for her. According to the official information, the Dark Knight has a resistance to magic so it would be hard for her to resist him. After saying the word explosion, she directed fire beams at the Dark Knight. Despite her skill, it didn't embarrass him. The Dark Knight's eyes were as scarlet as blood and eerily similar to the eyes of an angel with a scythe. They burned with a fire that could scorch any opponent. Now the knight had an ice weapon in his hands, which he could easily use to inflict deadly damage on his enemies. However, there was one condition. The new weapon must not be a spear. That was a weak point for Akai. Although a sword wouldn't reach her either, a bow or spear would suffice. The Dark Knight held a bow that was charged with electric beams. One hit, and the enemy would be finished. Akai, seeing this, cast a defense spell, hoping to repel the attack. But the spell didn't work. Damn, can someone like that exist? My shield can't withstand such a powerful attack. Akai's mana was rapidly dwindling. She needed to get down and increase the distance between herself and the Dark Knight. Akai lowered herself to the ground. It seemed to her that her mana was completely depleted. Potions could only be taken on the ground, and Akai couldn't rely on magical support. There will be a flash now, Akai said, hoping she could create a powerful technique that would give her victory. The Dark Knight expected something serious and out of the ordinary from Akai. He was ready to fight her even if she used the strongest spell. Just then, Akai noticed an arrow of lightning flying straight at her. She was horrified. She couldn't understand how it could have flown to the place where she found herself. It seemed that the Dark Knight could read minds. Akai spun around the Dark Knight, trying to get away from the arrow. But she was too fast. The arrow struck the ground next to Akai. The impact created a huge crater. Akai was in the epicenter of the funnel. She felt her body being dragged downward. All of the spectators looked at what was happening with open mouths and dilated pupils. They couldn't believe what had happened. The Dark Knight had caught Akai. But how? How could he know where she would move to? It seemed as if he could see the future. It was impossible. Even the most pumped-up artificial intelligence couldn't read players' minds, or predict them. That's cheating. Even if it's just an event, it's all too overdone. It seems that the balance of the Abyss world is still not perfect, even after the release. While the audience was discussing this, 33 players failed in a battle with the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight counted his defeated opponents. There were 33 of them. He was ready to show them what he could do. The Dark Knight's enemies had arrived. They were not prepared for what awaited them. The Dark Knight spared no one. Heavenly lightning struck the battlefield. The Dark Knight wondered who could master such a powerful technique. Heroes descended from the sky. 
They looked beautiful and majestic. The dark knight didn't care who they were, how many they were, or how they came to be. They would all suffer the same fate to be defeated. Malik, the leader of the heroes, motivated his comrades. He told them that this is not the time to give up. They must be brave and not be afraid of the enemy that stands before them. Malik knew that this was their last fight. He was willing to die to protect the world from the dark night. The dark night watched each of them. He heard one of the heroes shout, They will be with you from now on. He felt funny and amused. There were three heroes on the team, Malik, Rona, and Darik. Malik was the leader of the team and was willing to die to protect the world. Rona was a sweet and beautiful girl who was willing to fight to the end. Darik was a brave and goofy guy who was not afraid to fight the Dark Knight. Characters aren't new faces? Could it be the NPCs of the Abyss? The Dark Knight watches the clowns perform and is ready to destroy them. They call him the insignificant knight, but he only laughs. There will be a battle, he says. Yeah, you gotta teach the clowns a lesson. The Dark Knight has the place all to himself now. Let the creature rise from the abyss, where their suffering will be endless, and they will beg for mercy. Give them despair, my monster, let them suffer in helplessness. They don't know who you are, but they will soon realize, remaining skeletons. Malik was indignant what the hell was wrong with his legs. Why couldn't he move them? He seemed to have fallen into a swamp that was dragging him to the bottom. This guy has the relaxed skill but barely had he started to speak when something appeared in front of him. The partner couldn't even move in fear. Malik saw a monster from the abyss devouring its victims. The monster brought only fear, pain, horror, and agony. The hostess was horrified, unable to believe her eyes. God, what kind of nightmare had she just seen? It was Nuko, the elite monster of the abyss. I wonder if the dark knight can summon so many monsters. He's unrivaled. The monsters were begging for mercy. They were strong, but they wouldn't be strong enough to handle them. Tear them apart, Dark Knight. With each hero destroyed, his power grew greater and more invincible. The anchor woman couldn't contain her panic and horror. Is this happening for Rael? She thought it was a dream. Most of the NPC army has been defeated. The former NPCs triggered new storylines and characters in the Abyss world. Therefore, the management devised a plan to destroy all NPCs to the Dark Knight. He realized this and now proceeded to the next victim. Lika is 88th on the Blood Captain's list of useless guilds. This is the place where the rankers were gathered, so it's no surprise that our guild members ended up here as well. Lika's gaze was determined she had her weapon in hand ready to overpower her opponent. The Dark Knight did not allow himself to show weakness. He was not going to lose his pride and honor. His journey had been a long one, and it wasn't over yet. People were confused about the type of this boss. How can you defeat it without taking damage? His initial performance was incredible, and his movements were so fast that it took at least 300 times to analyze them. Another victim of the Dark Knight. It's time for Kinch to get ready. It's not going to be an easy fight. The girls sitting next to him supported Kinch, saying that he was their last hope. They urged him to give his best. Kinch approached with a confident gait and a serious expression on his face. Preparing for battle was essential, and someone's life was at stake. The mercenary leader of the human race known as Cobra has met his fate as he predicted. Many brave warriors have given their lives here. It seems they have reached their limit. This pretty girl is the high priest of the holy race. Her name is Kinal. A knight of the dragon race, Beras, was their last hope for victory and heroism. Dyla, queen of the elven archers, is united by the coming events. It's time to join forces for a triumphant victory. They could no longer continue the battle but they urged themselves to fight to their last heartbeat as long as their blood continued to flow in their veins. The glorious day had come when all the heroes joined forces to end the mayhem of evil. The power was in each of them, Kinch emphasized. 
the creator of the abyss decided to bestow upon the noble and brave heroes a powerful buff of energy that endowed them with abilities and power. Kinch suddenly possessed a blue sphere, creating a devastating energy that can destroy everything it touches. But can it completely defeat the Dark Knight? Kinch felt the energy encompassing his sensitive fingers. He could use it to create the element he had mastered. In the end, his last opponent was Kinch, the only one who could compete with the Dark Knight. Last Hope, of course, received a powerful buff from the creator whether players play or not. But he asks you to ignore the last of the opponents. It was time for the final battle between the Dark Knight and Kinch. The Dark Knight cried out, predicting that this place would become his grave. Kinch claimed to be three times stronger than before, thanks to NPC buffs. But he missed the cardinal rule of not underestimating your opponent. Within moments, the Dark Knight made an attack, flying up to Kinch and swinging his sword aptly. Kinch and the Dark Knight fought courageously, crossing swords. Neither of them gave up, each remained confident, fear unknown. Soaring upwards, the Dark Knight prepared for a fatal blow that, when raided, would leave no chance of survival. After landing, he struck Kinch's sword, creating a flame similar to the one that burned in their hearts. After repelling the Dark Knight's attack, Kinch jumped back to regain his breath and begin his counterattack. He was at a new level, but he shouldn't let his guard down. It's just a program that created a monster, and despite all the difficulties, you shouldn't give up. You have to move forward, even if it is a monster. Kinch is able to overpower the Dark Knight by following his movements, though it's nowhere near as easy as it seems. The Dark Knight felt a pain piercing through his body. He hadn't expected someone to be able to damage him. Bouncing back, he drew his sword, trying to determine the source of the danger. It became apparent that the Dark Knight was resisting the magic, but he was having a hard time with the control. A bright red beam penetrated the Dark Knight's armor, injuring him, though not fatally. It didn't stop him from moving. Impossible, he changes weapons so quickly. The beam it emitted was so powerful that it stopped the Dark Knight's movements for a few seconds. It was hard to believe that an artificial intelligence could have done this. It instantly approached Kinch, a sharp blade in its hand. Before Kinch could blink, he was seized with terror. The Dark Knight was amazed by Kinch's speed and strength. He was like a machine traveling at the speed of light. The Dark Knight grabbed Kinch's face and threw him into the ring with such force that he punched a hole in the ground. Kinch was in shock. He had never seen anything like this before. The Dark Knight attacked again. His sword pierced Kinch's body like steel pierces paper. Kinch was terrified. He knew he had lost. His strength was useless against the Dark Knight. The Knight was invincible. His strength was divine. Kinch couldn't even scratch him. Kinch was unhappy with the defeat at the hands of Doni. He didn't want to stay in his shadow forever. He wanted to prove that he was as good as him. Kinch was angry and furious. He was covered in red liquid, but he wasn't going to give up. He wanted revenge on the Dark Knight. Kinch stood up, even though he knew resistance was futile. He wanted to give the Dark Knight a chance to show him how a battle between equals ended. Kinch, look at the true power of the Abyss, which will wipe them all off the face of the earth so they won't suffer. The Dark Knight created a black moon in his hand and raised it to the heavens. This celestial force would destroy them all, leaving no chance for salvation. The wounded Kinch looked up at that star. It was beautiful, but the thick darkness left no hope. There was nothing he could do against the power of the gods. Kinch was horrified at what was happening. He had never seen anything like it, and he knew he never would again. The Dark Knight snapped his fingers, and a vortex formed around the moon. The moon grew bigger and more powerful until it was the size of an entire city. It was so huge and ominous that everyone was terrified. Kinch thought it was a curse, but it was only the beginning of the end. The Dark Knight counted the minutes left until they disappeared. Kinch only had a few seconds to live, and he knew he would disappear after that. He screamed that he would have his revenge. 
the moon enveloped its victims, and the entire ring glowed with a bright light that sizzled everything in its path. Thus ended their lives. The day after the one versus one hundred tournament, it was evening and a dark moon was shining in the sky. Donnie was going through the comments, and suddenly he saw the viewers discussing the recent events. Kinch had performed terribly this time, and his glory days were numbered. He fought back as hard as he could, but it didn't impress the viewers. They were disappointed and angry. But Donnie paid no attention to their reaction. He knew Kinch hadn't given up yet. It's all thanks to a device that increases synchronization with the character by 25%. It doesn't feel good, but he can't deny the effectiveness of such a thing. The Abyss World servers are supposed to be open now. He thinks he should try to get in, but he's a little nervous. Putting on the goggles, he wanted to enter the virtual reality where his adventures were already waiting for him. A huge open world, bright sunshine everywhere and pure white emptiness. It was as if he were lost in space, and there was nothing familiar around him. Kinch didn't realize where he was. There was only white all around, he could only see his hands. But he didn't lose his optimism. He knew that he would definitely find something to do. His avatar was already fully created. It was exactly what his older brother had talked about. He had said that increased synchronization with the character would enhance the brain's perception. Neo, a young boy of the human race, began his adventure in a village in the northwest of the kingdom of Lurderin. The village had been destroyed by the Dark Knight, and Neo was the only survivor. Neo decided it was time to begin his journey. He must find something important to stop the Dark Knight and rebuild the destroyed village. Suddenly there was a bright flash of light in the sky. Neo couldn't understand what was happening. The village, located in the northwest of the kingdom of Lurderin, was bleak and lifeless. Neo, a young boy of the human race, was walking down an abandoned street. He was alone and felt insecure. His starting stats were unimpressive. Level 1, XP 100 units, MP 100 units, attack 1 to 5 units, defense 1 unit, strength 5 units, luck 1 unit, dexterity 5 units, fortitude 0 units, faith 5 units, reputation 0 units. Suddenly, Neo noticed a group of hooded barbarians. They were approaching him. Neo knew he had to do something. He could either fight or run away. Neo, a young man of the human race, watched a group of warriors fighting dummies. He wanted to join them, but knew it was too late. The amount of experience points gained for destroying a dummy was decreasing as the number of players attacking them increased. Neo decided to wait until the warriors had completed their quest. Neo wants to become a hero, but he needs to reach level 5 to do so. He decides to go hunting to gain experience. However, the castle guards forbid him to leave the castle until he reaches the required level. Neo thinks this is unfair, but he has no choice but to obey. Neo doesn't have to worry. The guards warn against going into dangerous locations but the penalty for disappearing into the abyss world is a 12-hour ban. That's a pretty severe punishment, but Neo may not sweat about such a thing. The dark forest that surrounds him is dark and empty, with nothing in sight. So Neo sees a pack of wolves who are now level 3, and he just needs experience. The hunt is about to begin. Even a small scratch can take my life, so you have to be very careful and anticipate their movements. It doesn't matter because Neo is about to have such an exciting experience. Neo quickly made his way to the windrow to get ready for the hunt. He knew he needed to be in good shape to handle the wolves. The young man chopped the head off the first wolf with a single blow. He knew he had to be fast and accurate to survive. The lad was lucky that he remembered the movements of wild wolves well. He knew how they attacked and how to dodge their attacks. Great! If you keep this up Neo can arrive even more than thirty of these wild wolves. He's killed everyone who gets in his way. But suddenly Neo saw a wolf that was many times stronger than his fellow wolves, and could easily tear Neo to pieces. Neo wondered what kind of game, was this really the leader of a pack of wild wolves that had level ten? Wait a minute, didn't the article say they would add cursed monsters to the abyss world? 
Cursed monsters are a type of elite monsters cursed by the abyss. Neo recalls something like that happening, but this one doesn't look like a damned monster at all, and there's no way it could be that simple. Well, let's try to unwind it. Neo jumped and began to attack, raising his arm and swinging his sword. He saw the fierce gaze of the leader of the wolf pack, who was as bad as he was grinning. His persistence gave Neo the opportunity to defeat an opponent stronger than his rank. A challenge like this is not normal, he thought. When he saw the other reality, the clawed paw of a wolf appeared in front of his face. He was dumbfounded and shocked. The hellish stare of the wild dog, she with her sharp and dangerous claws, wounded Neo. This is what it means to underestimate your opponent. Neo backed away, realizing that he had just been shot. He had a duty to be very careful, vigilant, for one more mistake could cost him his life. Probably because it's a special monster, it's not as easy to destroy as he first thought. A wild dog can't be anything other than a dog. That's what he specifically told himself to cheer himself up and give himself the mindset to fight for a long time. But at the end of the day, Neil himself chose this path, and he must not back down, must become stronger, and not be a loser. The guy waited for the moment when the dog would get too close to strike the strongest blow. It was important for him to know at what distance to keep his opponent. And so he was able to overpower a strong opponent, although he was wounded, but the risk was justified, it was a hard fight, but he succeeded. 